Okay. Yes, we know why we use the transfer functions now. Yeah, we started with this example, I guess, right? Yesterday we are done with it. So, what is the question here? Find the difference equation description. Okay. They have given us the uh, the transfer function and they want us to determine the difference equation. So how did we do this? How did we do this? Given the transfer function, we did the cross multiplication, right? First, we made sure that everything is in negative powers of z because we do not want a plus sign here. Yes, we do not want, okay. Hmm? So that is why what we do is uh, first to make sure that everything is in positive negative powers of z sorry then after we did a cross multiplication y of z divided by x of z i remember uh, struggling to write this thing yesterday so i think we have we are done with this okay now uh, okay, we will continue hmm? we will continue yeah, we were discussing about the uh, stability right we were discussing about the stability so what's the rule by the way Yes, the thing is, if at all you know the transfer function, if at all you happen to know the transfer function, we can also determine the causality and stability. Okay, so that was possible with the impulse response also. It is possible with the transfer function also. Okay, it is possible with the transfer function also. With transfer function, you can always predict causality and a stability so what is the rule by the way if at all you have the system which is causal that is right side right nothing on the left side okay hmm? if at all you have the system that is causal then the rule is if at all you want the system to be stable then its transfer function should have a pole inside the unit circle it should have a pole inside the unit circle whereas if at all it's a causal system and if the pole is outside the unit circle then it can only diverge right so example i gave was 0.5 to the power n okay 0.5 to the power n into u of n will be having a z transform z divided by z minus 0 0.5 so the pole will be there at a plus 0.5 say and it's going to be a decaying exponential very very stable whereas uh, 2 to the power n into u of n will have a z transform z divided by z minus 2 with the pole at 2 which is going to be 2 to the power 1, 2 to the power 2, 2 to the power 3. Highly unstable. Okay. Hmm. Whereas if at all you have a non-causal system on the other case if at all you happen to have a non-causal system okay then if at all you have a non-causal system then your pole can be uh, outside the bracket also say something like 2 to the power n into u of minus n hmm? 2 to the power n into u of minus n you can see this is a decaying exponential okay this is a, a decaying exponential here what you get is your pole will be inside the uh, unit circle okay this is fine okay hmm? this thing is roc includes the uh, unit circle here this is a decaying exponential now we are talking about those systems which are both stable and causal okay hmm. i do not want any confusion there okay hmm. so uh, yeah here this is the other thing the relation between pole zero location and impulse response characteristics for a stable system here author has taken that uh, example here author has taken that example okay hmm. so what does the author say a pole lie a pole inside the unit circle contributes to a right sided turn to the impulse response if there is a pole inside the unit circle it contributes to the right sided stable system if there is a pole outside the unit circle and you want the system to be stable then it can only be a left sided sequence okay yes we got confused here hmm? anyway let us go to the problems and let us try to understand hmm? let us go to the problems and let's try to understand okay the bottom line of the story is if at all you want a system that is both stable and causal if at all you want system that is both stable and causal, all the poles, all the poles should lie inside the unit circle. Okay. If the poles do not lie inside the unit circle, the system may be causal, but may not be stable. Or system may be stable, but may not be causal. Okay. So yesterday we discussed about this particular numerical here. Okay. As you can see, constant one divided one minus alpha z to the power minus one form. So he wanted it to be, if at all it is a 
a completely stable system, then this is, you can see the alpha values, alpha to the power n into your friend, right? The inverse. So alpha being magnitude being uh, less than one, 0 0.9, this can be right sided. This can be right side, but this here magnitude minus two to the power n into your friend, it is going to be, uh, it does not include the unit circle. It's going to be giving you an ROC magnitude z greater than two here. Okay. So this is does not include unit circle. So for this thing to be stable, these two can be right sided, but this one has to be left sided, right? Then if at all you want this thing to be causal, all of them shall be concluded to be right sided only. Okay, all of them to be concluded as right sided only. Now there was just one question by the author. Can this system be both stable and causal? Okay, if at all you want the system to be uh, causal, that means all of them to be right sided then roc of the collective system will be outside two so this does not include the unit circle so if at all you want to make it causal it cannot be stable or or it is better simply explained by the poles so what is the, what is the rule roc of a causal and stable system should have all the poles inside the unit circle but this here you can see due to this two this one pole is outside the unit circle. So this system cannot be both stable and causal because there is a pole outside unit circle. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Yes. Let us see today what other problems do we have. Okay. Hmm. So the trick to this particular chapter, the trick to this particular chapter is uh, that uh, you should be able to, you know, this includes whatever that you study till now. You should have a nice knowledge about the uh, the inverse side transform, little bit about the properties and also you should be good in partial fractions. Okay. Hmm? So here is a nice question. What does it say? Uh, a stable and causal system is described. They have given you a, a difference equation. Okay. They have earlier. What was the question by the way? Earlier they simply gave you H of N the impulse response and I wanted to know, sorry, sorry, the transfer function. Here for a change, they have given a a different equation. See here, the transform analysis so nicely this has been done. You have been only given a different equation and author knows you can arrive at the impulse response from the different equation. Okay, you can arrive at the impulse response from the different equation. There are two ways to do it by the way. There are two ways to arrive at One is you can do it using time domain. You simply have to substitute x of n equal to delta n. Hmm? You simply substitute x of n equal to a delta n. If at all impulse is uh, input is an impulse, then output will be impulse response. But that's going to take a lot of time. You can see because of the recursion, because of the recursion, the output depends on uh, previous output. That's going to give me infinite terms. If at all I want to do this in a time domain, if at all I want to do this in time domain, that is why what I will do is that is why what I will do is I will try to do this in the z domain only. So what I will do is first I will uh, take the z transform. First I will take the z transform. Y of n is y of z 1 by 4 n minus 1. Z to the power minus 1 into minus 1. Y of n minus 2. Z to the power minus 2 into y of z minus 2 will minus minus 2 x of n becomes x of z 5 by 4. This is 5 by 4 x of n minus 1 becomes z to the power minus 1 into x of z. Then you got uh, y of z term and x of z term outside. Y of z equal to y of z by x of z. So here is the tricky part now. I am not at all good at it. I worked it out yesterday. That's why it's easy for me. Okay. How do you split this? How do you split this? So what is the rule? What is the rule? You have to write it in such a manner that uh, you, uh, you see here, these are the terms which I chose. You write it in a manner such that 1 by 4 uh, minus 1 by 8. Hmm? So you should write it in a manner that uh, it will give you, you should write it in, if at all you multiply you get uh, 1 by 8. If at all you add, you should get 1 by 4. Okay, hmm? that is the rule. If at all you multiply, you get 1 by 8. If at all you add, you should get 1 by 4. Hmm? Or what you can do is to split this thing, you can also use uh, uh, that, uh, you know, quadratic equation thing minus b. So what is that? Minus b uh, plus or minus. Hmm? This thing can also be used. So I think there is a tool in your calculator minus b plus or minus calculator b square minus uh, 4ac divided by minus b is correct or plus or minus b is correct or 4ac divided by 2a. Hmm? This will give you the two roots of the one is a plus one is minus. Two roots of the quadratic equation. They are right 
uh, split this thing there right split this thing. i think you should it might be in a, uh, you know you should know some better formula to split this then you apply the uh, partial fractions here hmm? then you apply the partial fractions and here i got this one and minus three the answer was there in the textbook that's why it was easy for me to uh, get this thing now here now that they said uh, h of z was given how do we arrive at h of n because every h of z can have a left sided sequence and a left sided sequence here they said so it has to be stable and it has to be causal so there was no other option for me but to develop it as a right sided sequence only okay anyway 1 by 4 and 1 by 3 would have been a decaying exponential only so there was not much of an issue okay so what was this topic all about the previous numerical what we saw in the previous numerical what we saw we were given the transfer function in the previous numerical we were given the transfer function and from the transfer function we arrived at the difference equation okay okay here here on the other hand here you are given a difference equation here you are given a difference equation from that we can arrive at both the transfer function see here you can arrive at the transfer function also and you can also arrive at the impulse response they had given that it has to be stable and causal so otherwise it could have been gone the other way okay hmm? so uh, there were two or four possibilities of the impulse response by the way since uh, from their clue we could get it okay so what sort of other questions we might uh, come across okay hmm. okay then yeah there are similar see here also let us see a few problems on uh, the difference equation where they will be giving you the difference equation and they want you to they want you to know the transfer function it will come anyway hmm? the transfer function and the impulse response representations okay hmm? so what you have to do see here uh, anything tricky no nothing like that so here is the difference equation simply apply the transform and you take the ratio h of z equal to y of z by x of z and you get this particular thing and how do you get the h of n here this is not straightforward right so what we will do for this particular thing what we will do is this i will write it as uh, 2 into z minus 1 into uh, z to the power minus into 1 divided by 1 minus alpha 1 divided 1 minus alpha z to the power minus 1 first okay mm -hmm. now uh, what will be the inverse of this particular thing so inverse of this particular thing is 1 by 2 to the power n into u of n 2 remains a constant okay 2 remains a constant 2 remains a constant no problem but now in the z domain in the z domain so what is the inverse z transform of this particular thing half to the power n into u of n okay hmm? uh, this z transform is half to the power n into u of n okay hmm? because see there is nothing given in the uh, question here okay hmm? so they did not tell us that it is stable or causal but if nothing is given whether stable or causal or no roc given then we have to assume it to be causal at least if not stable we have to assume it to be causal okay hmm? yes so now here you can see now that this thing got multiplied by z to the power minus one in the z domain okay so it's inverse a shift in the time domain uh, results in the multiplication by z in the z domain so every n was replaced by n minus one that is a secret this n half to the power n became half to the power n minus one u of n became u of n minus 1 okay it's a little tricky question but anyway from the difference equation we could arrive at the transfer function also and the impulse response also okay hmm. that was one and okay okay now the other problem anything tricky here okay, okay this problem you can see here y of n equal to only input terms x of n x of n there is no y of n term which is much much easier right so you apply the z transform h of z equal to y of z by x of z so you have these terms here hmm? so simply you develop them as a uh, one gives you delta n z to the power gives you okay hmm? so this was very uh, straightforward there was nothing much tricky there hmm? then uh, any other next question let us see uh -huh. here here okay, okay y of n minus one x of n plus x of n minus one 
Mm, so anything tricky here? Anything tricky here? Wait a second, let me take the attendance. Okay. Ah. Okay. Mm. Okay, in this question, anything tricky? No, you simply take the transform, you got the tur, you got the tur. See here, see, I am making this look much easier. But then here you have to split this particular tur. Now this term came in the denominator, right? So it was this term divided by this term in the denominator. So how should be the thing by the way? If at all you add the term, if at all you add the term you should get minus 4 by 5 if at all you multiply you should get 16 by 25 okay hmm. that was the requirement so the clever way in which this thing has been a split here hmm. so what they have done by the way what they have done is see here see here how the denominator has been shaped did you observe this particular thing this was 2 plus z to the power minus 1 see the way the denominator has been uh, split okay because 4 square was 16 and 5 square was 25 there was not much of an option for the author to split this thing you can try it on your calculator also that is why uh, 1 minus 4 by 5 z to the power minus 1 1 minus 4 by 5 z to the power minus 1 whole square was used i think this is a a trick question just observe how do we do this you can also try minus b plus or minus square root of b square minus 4ac divided by 2a okay hmm? so this is a uh, trick question once again okay so i will mark a star here you scribble it on your notepad and check hmm, what you'll get okay so that was that so what can we do given the difference equation we can get the transfer function and also we can get the impulse response when nothing is given we'll always go for uh, right sided impulse response okay a causal impulse response okay hmm? okay next uh, what else can we do what else can we do we can if at all if at all you are given the impulse response if at all you are given the impulse response you can get the transfer function you can get the transfer function and you can also get the difference equation that's also fine okay hmm? this is also you can see here you have been given an impulse response so what you have to do how do you get the transfer function z transform we all know z transform of the impulse response is nothing but the, the transfer function hmm? z transform of the impulse response is the uh, transfer function so uh, here it is here was the impulse response then i took the z transform and i got the transfer function was this a trick question or something no three is a three that's the constant 1 divided 1 minus alpha z to the power minus 1. Now see here, this is also a trick question. You can see 1 by 4 to the power n into u of n minus 1. Here, you should make sure that every n is replaced by n minus 1. u of n term cannot be changed. So what we will do is we will write it as u of n minus 1 and 1 by 4 to the power n minus 1 okay hmm? and see uh, i have made this both the term n as n minus 1 so i shall have here another 1 by 4 okay hmm? because 1 by 4 to the power 1 plan this one we will get it cancelled so that is why you see here the way they have written okay this is a trick question because they wanted every n to be replaced by n minus 1 sometimes we might make mistakes so i had given my small test there also something similar was there. okay once this is done once this is done the z transform of this you can see so how do you get the z transform of this you know the z transform of 1 by 4 to the power n into u of n you know the z transform of 1 by 4 to the power n into u of n 1 divided by 1 minus 1 divided by 1 minus alpha z to the power minus 1 okay then n replaced by n minus 1 gets you a z to the power minus 1 multiplied on the z domain okay hmm? this came because of n replaced by n minus so you got a z by minus one. and then 3 by 4 3 and 4 here it was that okay so that now taking the inverse z transform taking the inverse z transform no 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 now you do the cross multiplication hmm? this thing gets uh, multiplied by y of z 
uh, divided by x of z hmm? you do the uh, cross multiplication and uh, all these terms are uh, you know uh, x of z into 3 by 4 z to the power minus 1 so x of n minus 1 y of z minus 1 by 4 z to the power minus 1 y of z that gets you y of n minus 1 you can see very very straightforward question but with little trick so uh, properties of z transform play a very important role here okay hmm? and let us see one more question here hmm? okay, okay so one more question is here so what is this 1 by 4 to the power n into 1, 3 to, 1 by 3 to the power n into u of n then 1 by 2 to the power into u of n minus 2 into u of n minus 1 here also you cannot make u of n minus 1 into u of n minus 2 remember you have to make this one as n minus 1 see they did it which got 1 by 2 to the power minus 1 outside the bracket 1 by 2 to the minus 1 is nothing but 2 okay this is nothing but 1 by 2 to the power minus 1 okay because they wanted n minus 1 term here so so, so uh, yeah then afterwards uh, taking the z transform so what are the z transform this thing here by the way uh, 1 divided by uh, what is this 1 divided by 1 minus 1 by 3 hmm? z to the power minus 1 uh, this was the z transform first one for the second one what is it u of n minus 1 right so z to the power minus 1 into 1 divided by uh, 1 minus 1 by 2 hmm? 1 divided by 1 minus 2 z to the power minus 1 and then 2 getting multiplied this term plus okay this term plus the second term then afterwards they got it in the form of single numerator and a single denominator see when you get the transfer function you make sure that all the z are in the negative powers make sure that all the z are in negative power and then you should have a single numerator and single denominator not like this okay uh, sum of like in the partial fraction setup no no you have to have single numerator and single denominator and you get the ratio then after do the cross multiplication and you get to have your inverse transform there you have your difference equation so why do we need this thing by the way why do you need to you know come to from impulse response to the difference equation see the difference equations exactly let you know how many number of d flip flops you actually need okay the difference equations let you know how many number of d flip flop how many number of multipliers how many number of adders you need okay the, d, uh, the difference equations let you know the exact uh, circuit and it also lets you do the budgeting right uh, how many of the equipments are needed and that or it also lets you optimize okay so it is uh, going from the impulse response to the implementation details okay okay what else what else can we do here okay okay now let us see inverse system now let us see inverse system see why i am telling this thing is doing all these things in the time domain would have been a bigger headache okay doing these things in time domain would have been a bigger uh, headache okay that is why we are uh, studying all these things in the z i don't uh, see only in the beginning i discussed inverse system in your uh, module one okay because it was tricky one and you will see in your textbook there are only there is only one problem on the inverse system on deconvolution okay that's why here it is much easier what is an inverse system by the way you have a input x of n say you have the input x of n you give it to the system h okay mm -hmm. say you got your data mm -hmm. and uh, you applied it to a modulator you know modulator right you get your data low frequency data put it on a high frequency modulator hmm? right you have studied modulation right you get your low frequency data put it on a modulator okay uh, so it will be converted to high frequency so that is the system now you want your original data back okay you want your original data back okay see was y of n you get x of n you get y of n i want to recover my data that is called as demodulator right your actual might be each one is called as demodulation so i need to have an inverse system 
i need to have an inverse system that will let me know my original data that will let me recover my original data okay you take the water you freeze it it becomes ice then you cool it down it again becomes water okay you take a piece of paper you put it on fire it becomes ash then can you get the original thing back uh, no okay so that's how can in some systems for some processes inverse exist for some of them they do not okay so now here given the possibility that whether inverse exist or not uh, it's very easy for us to find out the rule is so these kind of situation we keep getting this kind of situation where we uh, do the manipulation right you take the input you take the z transform you take the inverse z transform you get the original thing back okay so for the uh, the system which does the z transform the inverse z transform system shall be the inverse system okay hmm? so what is the requirement by the way the requirement is this okay so the rule is the rule is if at all you have the hf in the system the inverse system should be such that if at all you convolve with the inverse system you shall get the input so okay hmm? that is the rule okay that is the rule okay hmm? see uh, why are you telling because this uh, what is this how did you get hfn hfn is nothing but the impulse right you take a system you apply the impulse you get the impulse response then uh, if at all you apply it to the inverse system what you should get back the input which was the impulse right now if at all i simply apply the z transform h of minus of h to the power minus one of n let me call it as h to the power minus one of z let me represent this as z transform h of n is h of z what is the z transform of delta n one convolution becomes multiplication so what is the formula to get the inverse system one divided by h of z isn't that easy one divided by h of z should give you the inverse system so that's easy right now the question is the inverse system that you are getting whether it will be stable or not okay whether it will be stable or not now the rule is now the rule, what is the rule for h of z to be stable the rule for h of z so this had h of z had h of z had uh, what did it have by the way poles in the numerator denominator okay h of z had zeros right it had zeros h of z had sorry sorry sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, h of z had zeros in the numerator zeros in the numerator right h of z has zeros in the numerator and it had poles in the denominator now the rule for normal h of z the system was that the pole should be inside the circle now that you have h to the power minus one of the, the inverse system has becoming one divided by h of z h inverse of z it's going to have h inverse of z is going to have uh, uh, the poles are now in the numerator the zeros are in the denominator okay zeros are in the denominator so that's what they say is if at all your h of z has all the zeros in the unit circle if h of z has all the zeros in the unit circle then its inverse system will also be stable okay hmm? what the system so for a system h of z to be stable fine all the poles shall be inside the unit circle okay but then if at all you want a system where h of z is also stable the transfer function is stable and its inverse system also to be stable then he says that you better have all your zeros also inside the unit circle okay that's the rule so he coins this word called as minimum phase system he coins this word called as minimum phase system okay hmm? it's the word used by the author okay. it's called as minimum phase that means that means all the poles the system should have that means the system should have all the poles and the zeros see till now we did not speak about zeros right because old determined the stability but now that you are talking about inverse system the poles became zero zero became pole due to this particular thing that is why that is why here is a uh, nice statement made by the author a system that has causal and stable inverse system must have all its poles and zeros inside the unit circle okay that is the kind of rule zeros are going to play in case you want to recover the original signal back from the this thing right you take an amplifier you amplify the signal you want to get the original thing back right so you have designed an amplifier that was stable but uh, the de amplifier okay which you, from which you want to get the original thing back, that too should be stable right so it can be 
straight away identified by the transfer function of the actual system itself if at all you get a zero outside the circle then the inverse getting an inverse might be very very difficult okay hmm? that was about inverse system so what is the conclusion of this whole story we get the transfer function and you take one by the transfer function that is your inverse system which will let you recover the original signal x of n okay and if at all your h of z and h inverse of z the inner system both of you want to be stable or uh, the so called minimum phase let both the poles and zeros lie inside the unit circle okay so we'll be getting this question will be given a different equation or a transfer function they will ask you to get the inverse system okay hmm. and there what you have to do is you have to uh, predict whether it will be stable or not see here is the question okay hmm. uh, what does the author ask here author says okay hmm. here you have been given here I mean, a system has been described by so and so okay here is a system find the transfer function of the inverse system what you have to do transfer function of the inverse system you have to simply get the h of z take the z transform of this side take the z transform of the expression and simply get the ratio y of z divided by y of z divided by x of z right? then afterwards then afterwards what you do is then afterwards there is one more question you simply replace uh, uh one divided by h of z that is numerator coming to denominator denominator coming to numerator you see here numerator and denominator denominator and numerator so this here is the inverse system one by h of z is your inverse system okay so it so happens during the exam that you simply see and you simply get this transfer function and you leave the uh question okay but no 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 you know system is one by h of the this here is your answer in the system there is a second question does a stable and causal inverse system exist okay. does a stable and causal inverse system exist so for that what you have to do is for that what you have to do is you have to determine the poles you have to determine the poles okay you have to determine the poles. if the poles lie inside the circle see here this pole is at one by four this pole is at minus one by two both of them lie inside the unit circle that is why the inverse system is definitely stable okay the inverse system is definitely stable so our answer does a stable and causal inverse system exist yes okay hmm? this thing can be right sided can be causal and can be stable right hmm? that was just the conclusion made here in the uh, previous topic right so what of that uh, here it was huh. a system that is both stable and causal must have all its poles inside the unit circle okay one more question uh, that is there here is this system here is also this system is also a minimum phase system you can see there is a zero there is a zero at one by two Hmm? Zero at one by two. So this is a minimum phase system. You can see this particular H of the gear had actually uh, two zeros and two poles, right? Now this inverse system also has now two poles and two zeros. But since both poles and zero lie inside the unit circle only, this I will call also as a minimum phase system. Okay, this will also be called as a minimum phase. System. Okay, hmm. so that's it. Uh, we'll stop here today. Tomorrow we'll uh, continue. Hmm. Tomorrow we'll continue. Thanks for uh, joining.